Welcome back to Educator.com's AP English Language and Composition course. This lesson is an introduction to the essay section. Let's get started. All right, we're going to begin with a short overview. In this lesson, we're going to cover the format of the essay section, exactly you know, what, what kind of stuff they're asking for. We're going to look at the content, what kind of essays you'll have to write. We'll look at who's reading these essays. We'll get a profile of the kind of person you're writing for. We're going to ask why do these essays matter, why should you care, and finally we're going to look at how these essays are different from the essays that you've written in class. All right, to begin with, the format of the essay section. The essay section of this test gives you 120 minutes to answer three essay questions. Now, if you're too lazy to do the math, that is 40 minutes per essay. But before you get that 120 minutes, before you get that 40 minutes per essay, you will be given a 15 minute reading period. Take advantage of this time. Basically, you've got 15 minutes to do nothing but read all of the prompts and all of the materials and everything they're going to be asking you about. So, study the prompts, study the passages as closely as you can. Think about what positions you want to take and how you plan to argue those positions. This is reading and thinking time, so get as much reading and thinking done as you can. Now, these essays account for 55% of your grade on the test, but they take two-thirds of your time which means they feel and they look a lot scarier and a lot more important than they really are. This feels like the end of the world, but it's not. So if you already did well in the multiple choice, steady on, breathe, you're doing well. Now, you will be given all the paper that you need, including scratch paper, at the test site, but you will not be given writing implements. So remember to bring two or three blue or black pens with you to the test site. They won't give you any pens, and if your pen runs out of ink, you are SOL. All right. So. What kind of essays are you actually writing? Content. First, you will have to write a rhetorical analysis or expository essay. Basically, you'll be given a passage and you'll have to analyze the author's argument and point of view and explain how the passage does whatever it does. Basically, explain the argument to your reader. Then, you'll have to write an argumentative essay. You will have to support, refute, or qualify an author's position on the issue. Once again, you're going to have to know what the position is, and then you're going to have to say, I agree, and this is why, I disagree, and this is why, or I agree a little bit and disagree a little bit, and this is why. The this is why is actually really important, but look for those words, support, refute, or qualify. They will be your best friends. Finally, you'll have a synthesis essay. You'll have to look at multiple sources and bring several of them together in a cogent essay explaining their common subject. Now, a quick word on the synthesis essay. Uh, you won't actually have to use every single source. You'll have to pick and choose. Some people do use all of the sources, and if you have a great idea that uses all the sources, go ahead. But don't feel like you have to bring them all in if one of them just seems to be out of left field. All right. So who's reading these essays? Who are you writing for? One of the things you're always told in writing classes, know your audience. Who is your audience? Well, I will tell you. These essay readers are high school, college, and university instructors who take a week out of the year to read and score these essays. So basically, these are people who teach writing in some way for a living, and they're taking a week of their time to sit in a small room and read essay after essay after essay after essay. Keep that in mind. I'll come back to it. Now, these people don't know you personally. In most cases, they won't even know your name. And they will be completely unfamiliar with your style of writing. They won't know if you've improved from the beginning of the year. They won't know if your cat died last week and you're distraught. They don't know any of that. Now, so, they don't know you personally. The other thing you have to consider is you don't know them personally, and you can't tailor your, tail your essay to their personal pr uh, preferences. If they want every essay to mention dogs in some way, you won't know that. You have no way of predicting that. So your only chance is to do the best you possibly can and trust your own work. Now, the other thing you need to know is the readers are working from examples of each score agreed upon by the group. When they're trained in this, now every year, uh, the table leader will pick out a certain essay and go, okay, this is a typical 9, which is the highest score you can get. This is the best score you can get. If you want to give an essay a 9, it needs to be as good as this essay. This is a 5, which is the average score. So if you want to give an essay an average score, it's got to be in the same ballpark as this essay. This is a 1, a terrible essay. This is what you're looking at if you're going to do a terrible essay. And they train all of these readers to grade the same way that the table leaders do. So, remember, you're being measured against other students who were answering the same questions you did under the same circumstances you did. All right, most essays are read at least twice, often by different readers for consistency. This uh, solves the problem of somebody having food poisoning from lunch and giving everything a two. 
Now, readers give about 65% of the essays they read a middling score, somewhere in the five or six range, because frankly they consider most of the essays to be re they read to be mediocre. Because again, imagine a person sitting in a small room reading essay after essay after essay. <laughs> five, 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 it happens very easily. So your job is to relieve the monotony and make your essay stand out. Your job is to make them sit up and go, oh, this is good.